All right, guys, I'm just going to do a how-to video on, you know, getting up to six terabytes worth of storage hooked up with a PS4. A lot of people did request the how-to guide, you know, how do you plug everything in and get it all hooked up together, which I'm going to show you now in this video. But before I do that, I just want to comment on the previous setup. As you'll notice, now I'm using a Molex power supply to power the drive on. Before, I was using enclosures. You can still do the enclosure method. If you want to do that, I'll link the video in the description below, and you can still use that video to find out more information on which way you should do it or not. Uh, the hook, the setup with the PS4 is still the same. Uh, the cable that I'm going to use is still going to be the same. So that physical setup with the PS4, the connections and all that, that's still the same. The only difference is how to power the drive on. You can still use enclosures if you want. I do recommend that if you can find it, simply because it's more cleaner. And by cleaner, I mean it looks more discreet. You can, you know, have the drive sitting neatly in underneath your television or whatever like I've done in my video and it, it just looks more eye-catching whereas this the drive is exposed and think you've got little bits of cables but this uh, power plug here the kettle lead it's quite long anyway it's 1.8 meters so you can have all of this hooked up and sitting discreetly at the back of your unit somewhere elevated um, and just out of view so you nobody will even notice it that's really up to you the only downside with the enclosure method is that the in, the method that I recommend the one that uses a SATA extension cable to find the right enclosure for that method it's it's quite hard it's quite difficult because those enclosures are not sold anymore and um, they're quite rare um, I have actually purchased mine two or three years ago not with the idea of doing this setup I purchased it a while back for, for some other reason I just happened to have one lying around I can't find that same enclosure anymore it's been discontinued all the modern enclosures they cover the entire port uh, the, the power and the SATA port so they cover this entirely so because of that you can't actually plug in a SATA extension cable there because there's no space available and in those cases with the modern enclosures you need to have one with an eSATA port at the back and a SATA mail to eSATA cable you can still do that if you do buy a modern enclosure you can use one with an eSATA port and a SATA mail to eSATA cable uh, which I've linked in the description of the previous video I'm not going to link it in this description I'll link you the previous video I'm not going to link it in this description because this is not about that setup and I don't recommend that setup it can be done it's very easy to do it's very clean you know eye-catching whatever but it's not the setup that I recommend because then the enclosure becomes like the middle man between the drive and the PS4. I prefer the direct connection which is the SATA extension cable that tr plugs directly into the PS4 and into the hard drive so it's a direct connection between the console and the drive that's the one that I recommend and as I said the enclosure for that setup is quite rare to find but you can do that with this method where instead of using the enclosure you use this Molex power supply and the enclosure that I used was only being used to power on the drive it wasn't for any other reason it was just to power the drive on so if you can't find that enclosure which a lot of people have said they have is they've had issues finding you can just use these things here which I will show you in a second and you can get the exact same hook up with the PS4 using a SATA extension cable have a direct connection between the console and the drive and then use these components to power the drive on what you will need first of all is the drive now I've only tested with the Seagate um, hard drives that's the Seagate 3 terabyte 4 terabyte and 6 terabyte models I can't comment on the reliability or quality of any other brand Western Digital is pretty good and very reliable but I have not used it specifically with the PS4 so if you do use a drive from a different brand generally they should be okay you know up to 6 terabytes all of them should work but people have said that they've had issues with the Toshiba hard drives I can't comment on that like I said I've only tested with the Seagate drives and the three drives that I have tested with I'll link in the video description below um, so you will have access to that information but I can't comment on the reliability of any other drive or any other brand if you do decide to go with a different brand please bear that in mind you'll have to do your own research I can't help you there but once you've chosen the drive of your choice you'll need this cable this is the SATA power port uh, cables um, sorry this is a SATA power connector which plugs into the power port at the back of the hard drive there the other end is a Molex. Now, generally, with most 3.5 inch hard drive purchases, these cables are included to hook the drive up, uh, presumably to a PC. So, these cables will be included. But just in case this cable is not included, I will show you what it looks like. That's the Molex connector, that's the SATA power connector. I will link it in the video description below as well. So, if you do need to buy it separately, you can do so. Um, but generally, as I said, it will be available with inside the box of your hard drive. So, you basically connect that like this and then you've got the other end which is the Molex end and that goes into the Molex power supply that's this end here now you've got this Molex connector that plugs into there and the other end plugs into hard drive that's it that's your physical hookup done to power the drive on now this is the Molex power supply it can come with its own mains power plug my one didn't 
as you can see it's just an empty port so I needed to buy a power lead separately again I'll link this same one because I've tested it and used it in the description below and the power lead that you need it's called a kettle lead now this is very common it's used in all PCs and pretty much all monitors so you will know chances are you will know what it is but even if you don't I'll link this in the description below as well so once you've bought the power lead the kettle lead that goes into the unit here the Molex unit and that powers it on and the other end of that Molex unit goes into there and this thing goes into there now this as I mentioned is 1.8 meters in length so you can have it plugged far at the back or somewhere out of view so if you don't want all of these wires being exposed or in view you can hide them and, and make it a bit more discreet so the only thing you can see is basically the PS4 console with all of these things hooked up to the drive your drive will then be able to power on and then you just need a SATA extension cable which connects to this port here the SATA port and to the PS4 I'll talk more about that in a second and that will basically allow you to allow the PS4 sorry to access the drive um, on the left here you can see a pair of dual fans um, well I've got two sets and that's to cool the drive down. Now before anyone throws a fit, you know, hold on to your nerd rage. I'm not saying that 3.5 inch hard drives re require cooling or dedicated cooling of any sort. Um, but the 6 terabyte model does run hotter than normal 3.5 inch drives. That's a fact. Again, I'm not saying that it requires dedicated cooling. These are just optional extras. If you have this drive and you have these three things, as I've mentioned already, you're good to go. If you leave the drive open at normal room temperatures or even if you put it inside a box, as long as the box or the enclosure has vents, you will be fine. These things are not needed. They're just optional extras. So you will be fine with these things that I've shown you already as long as the drive is either open like this or in a box with vents on the side or the back or whatever or an enclosure with vents you will be fine because that will allow the heat to dissipate but if you do want to go for the extra peace of mind which I went for it's not very expensive um, you can get these dual fans and these are conventionally designed designed to go underneath the drive as you can see from the screws here um, they basically screw on onto the drive and they're placed like this and that's how they're intended but I bought an extra set just to put on the surface of the drive now the top bit obviously wouldn't screw on but it will just sit there on the top that way I've got cooling from both the bottom and the top so I've got both surfaces cooled that's not how they're designed to be used but like I said you know it's something that I can do and I want to do so if, if you do want this optional extra peace of mind these are very good reliable fans from Evercall I'll link these in the description below all in all including the fans this costs this cost me about twelve pounds fifty or thirteen pounds which is roughly eighteen to nineteen dollars um, maybe fifteen to sixteen euros so let's just say thirteen pounds fifteen or sixteen euros and roughly twenty dollars that's about the same as the price of an enclosure anyway and this is more reliable because it lets you have a direct connection using the SATA extension cable so that's the setup that I recommend um, and if you're wondering, oh, how how do I hook these fans together? Do I need extra components? You don't. As long as you've got this, like I said, this thing goes in the back of the drive there. This thing is supposed to go in the Molex power supply. And these are the two connectors of the fan. If you see, they're almost identical to this. So the front of this goes into the back of this connector here, like so. And the front of this connector and the front of this connector, they're identical. So you've just extended the connection and hooked the fans up. You do that with both sets of fans like this. So they're hooked up basically like that and you've uh, extended that connection and hooked the fans in between and then you put this in at the front and that's it, everything will power on. I'm just going to pause the video and hook these three things up or four things whatever and show you what it looks like once it's all hooked up so just bear with me. So as you can see as I was saying um, that's the main connector that you had, power bit that goes into the power port and the Molex bit that goes into this Molex section here and as I was saying the two fan connectors that are hooked in between that just extend this to that and still let you have the fans hooked up so everything is hooked up I'm just going to power it on just give me a second and that's by power oh right yep the kettle lead is also plugged into the Molex unit here so that's also hooked on I just power it all on now by connecting the main power plug and as you can see the fans have started spinning um, both both of them and the drive is also powering on I'm not sure if you can hear it I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up but the drive is powering on as well um, obviously I haven't connected it up to the PS4 so the PS4 can't access it yet but that's the power connections done you just need this and that and the drive and if you want the optional fans you can have that as I said the fans were designed to go underneath the drive so you basically sit the drive on top of it like that and you 
get the screws out uh, the screws will be included with the fan so you can screw them on at the bottom obviously the top will not be screwed on but that's how I'm gonna have it it's got cooling from the top and the bottom it's not the conventional way to do it but that's the way that I'm gonna do it and you have all this wiring at the back I'm gonna put the hard drive discreetly out of view and as I said this is 1.8 meters in length so it's gonna let me um, you know discreetly put the hard drive away so all of this you know nonsense will not be seen by anyone um, as I said you just need to then connect the SATA extension cable at the back here and it will hook you up with the PS4 and then you just plug all these things together power it on and do a firmware reinstallation you do need to install the firmware when you do a hard drive upgrade that's not just with the 3.5 inch even if you put the drive in internally you will need to reinstall the firmware I'm just going to show you that now uh, not the firmware installation sorry I'm just going to show you the physical connection with the PS4 now so I'm just going to pause the video bear with me okay so here is my PS4 as you can see I've taken the top cover off it's a little bit dusty please bear with me um, yeah so the dry, the cable, the SATA extension cable goes inside there. I do need to clean this bit up, as you can see. I haven't dusted it in about a week or so. But anyway, um, it goes inside there. I'm not going to take it out because, as you can see, I've oh wow, I just turned my PS4 on. Oops. Okay, so anyway, um, it does go inside the where the original hard drive was before. I'm just going to hold that down so it resets. Okay, so once you plug the cable in, it goes inside there where the original hard drive was. You can fasten the cable down. Um, I've used cellar tape. Um, you can use electrical tape, or you can use cable tires and you know just run it through these little vents here. Um, the back of the cable, people were saying, how do I get the back out? As you can see with the top cover, I run it out the back of one of the vents. Once you've done that, you can pretty much close uh, the top cover back. I can't do it with one hand. Um, it's a little bit tight, but basically, I'm just going to leave it here for now. Um, because the cable is coming out one of the back vents of the PS4 it allows you to get the cover back on it's a little bit of a tight fit but it will go on so then your PS4 basically looks like a normal PS4 you can see the gaps here at the moment because I haven't closed uh, the cover properly I will do that later but people were saying how to get the cable in there it's very easy it plugs into the same port that the hard drive was plugged in you can see it the size of the port will be the same size as this you need to sort of look in there um, I can't really show you with the camera at the moment, but um, you might, if your fingers, for example, my hands, um, they don't really fit inside this section here. You may need to use needle nose ply uh, pliers just to hold on to the cable and, and sort of slide it in and, and slot it into the port there. Um, you'll also, uh, t tweezers would also do the same job, so if you don't have needle nose pliers, you can just. Well, Okay, I've just ejected my disc of GTA. Sorry, I keep hitting the touch buttons. They are a little annoying. I'm just going to power it down. Yeah, so as I was saying, um, you can use needle nose pliers or tweezers to just sort of get the cable in there. And uh, once you've done that, that's your physical connection done. You run it out the back of one of the vents and then you just close the cover. And the other end of the cable, which is over here, I'll show you this cable. Again, I'll link it in the description below. I'll show you in more detail. Right, so I just want to give you a little bit more information on the SATA extension cable that I've used. As I said, I will do that. Um, I'm just going to splice this in the middle of my video, so you know if, if it's randomly edited, bear with me. I don't really care about the finesse. I just want to get all of the, you know the information across. Now that's the SATA extension cable. This bit plugs into the hard drive. This bit plugs into the P uh, the port inside the PS4, as I showed you. Um, now your cable, because the manufacturers have changed the design, will come with these two connectors on either end. They new they do need to be taken off. They do snap off quite easily. They're very you know sort of soft so it's not it's no problem I can't really do anything about that unfortunately you know it's down to the manufacturers and they have changed the design the original cable that I purchased just had this port here uh, sorry this connector here it didn't have these um, these little clips on the side so you know like I said I'm sorry I can't do anything about that it's a newer design cable but it's the same cable in essence it will work the same way um, so just snap these two things off if yours does come with these two little connectors and you should be fine this will plug inside the PS4 as I showed you and I do recommend one meter in length simply because it gives you a little bit more flexibility it's not required but because obviously you might want to put your drive a little bit away from the PS4 out of reach or out of sight you know discreetly some of you may have children and you don't want the drive to be seen so you might want to push it at the back you know somewhere you you would you would want the cable to at least be long enough so the drive can can reach the proper place that you have in mind you 
can use shorter cables, 30 centimeter ones, 20 centimeter ones, or 50 centimeter ones, but again, that limits the amount of uh, distance that you have between the PS4 and the drive, so it will limit you know how far you can really store the drive or keep the drive, whatever. That's really down to you. I recommend at least one meter because it provides enough flexibility to you for you to store the drive discreetly but again that's down to personal preference this cable and everything else as I've uh, showed you in the video previously will be linked in the video description below so please do check that out I can't comment on retailers I live in the UK so obviously I've used ebay.co.uk or amazon.co.uk to buy most of these products and I will give you those specific links um, if you live outside the UK please don't ask me on what retailers you can use to buy these products because I really have no idea I can't help you and I don't want to give you the wrong information but eBay generally and Amazon generally from pretty much most countries will stock these products um, you know and ship to your local areas but you'll have to find that out yourself I will give you obviously the links which will contain the item name description and of course a picture so you know exactly what the item is what it's called what it looks like so you'll know exactly what you need where to find it that's really down to you I can't really help you if you live outside of the UK so I do apologize for that and I'm gonna carry on with the rest of the video just like I said this I'm just gonna splice this in the middle um, and the rest of the videos got is gonna follow shortly over there you can see the port that's free it just plugs in there and that's it you're good to go and you power everything on and do a firmware installation and you're pretty much good um, I'm just gonna hook all those things up and power it on just to show you that yeah it, it indeed does work so I'm just gonna pause the video and I'll be right back okay so as I was showing you previously everything is hooked up I just need to power the drive on with the kettle lead so I'm just gonna plug this into the mains and as you can see and hear the fans have started spinning which means it's receiving power the driver is also making a noise I'm not sure if you can hear it but it's powering on it's just waiting a few seconds and then I hit the PS button on my controller to turn everything on um, you just heard the PS4 turn on there's the lights um, and the controllers also synced and it's just gonna boot up I would need to switch my TV input to PS4 okay I've done that and as you can see in front of you it's there you are everything is powered on and I've got uh, let me just show you system storage at the top 5.38 terabytes near the bottom you can see 4.38 uh, that's the free space left because obviously I've got 900 gigs there and 100 gigs almost there so yeah they, there you are that's how to do the physical setup I do recommend this way that the the method that uses the SATA extension cable if you can find an enclosure that allows you to use a SATA extension cable then go ahead and find that because obviously it's, it's quite rare you might not always discover those sort of enclosures they have been discontinued but if you can find that sort of model then yeah go ahead and purchase it it's very easy to do it that way and it's a more cleaner setup but if you can't find the right enclosure you can still do the SATA extension cable setup um, with the the Molex power supply as I've showed you here that's the setup that I recommend, the SATA extension cable. That's definitely the most reliable one. I would not use eSATA enclosures and SATA mail to eSATA cables. I don't recommend them. As I said, it doesn't leave a direct connection between the PS4 and the drive any longer. The enclosure acts as a middleman. And for that reason, I wouldn't go for it. But if you still want to do it that way, you can do. That's entirely up to you. But this is the setup that I recommend. I've shown you the how-to now and everything that I've used, the components, the cables, uh, the equipment will be linked in the description below so please do check that out. Hopefully this covers everything now and it answers you know the remaining questions that you guys had but if you still you know need more assistance or whatever just leave your um, comments in the section below and I will try and get back to them individually whenever I can. Um, so yeah that's that's pretty much it. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching.